Hello viewers, join me for a race full of depravity, penalties and just all round absurdity because, well, take a look at this very first moment of the race and this guy has found himself 90 degrees into the wall 1.3 seconds into the race absolutely brilliant and this is a typical scene that we would see on this daily race C around Le Mans and this would be a typical reaction from me. However, let's jump into this race. This is going to be the actual first race of this video. Starting 8th on the grid, up behind Big Mac 95, 95, 95. And it comes at a good time, does this Le Mans race, given that the, the real Le Mans race is going to be featuring this weekend. And so what better than to get five million penalties around this track in Gran Turismo 7 instead. So coming up towards Turt Rouge and this is going to be exhibit A of penalties as you see there just driving beyond the curb beyond the track limits and the stewards do not like that. Half second penalty. Big Mac getting the same punishment as well as we hurtle down towards the first chicane and look at this all manner of chaos breaking out and we're going to get one overtake. On the exit, I'm going to ghost through this guy and collect myself another penalty. Collecting, uh, sorry, colliding with another car. 2.5 seconds now. Just like Big Mac in front. We seem to be matching each other for penalties at this point. Bit of a moment on the exit of the second chicane as we head towards Mulsanne. A bit later on in the lap, we're both now going to serve these extremely lengthy penalties i somehow made myself i uh, made my way up to sixth position by this point serving the penalty though and dropping down now uh, down to ninth lots of ghosting you'll notice on this race it was a really weird one i don't know why it was happening but uh, whenever anyone slowed down anywhere the car seemed to ghost out uh, into the pit lane go a couple of cars up in front so we're going to gain a handful of positions for the time being just for reference here you did have to do one pit stop during this race. You didn't necessarily have to change tyres or do anything, but you, you, you at least had to go into the pit lane. Which is what I'm going to do here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not actually. I'm going to continue and get a penalty. So collecting them like the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, completing the set, trying to get a penalty at every corner. Which is quite an ask because it's a long track, but I'm uh, going that way at this at this moment. Up into fourth place and somehow when you tell me how i didn't get a penalty for that blatantly cutting the track and the stewards turning a blind eye to that one for some reason who knows anyway serving the penalty one uh one second penalty to be served there still in fourth place guy right behind must have had a penalty as well and now we can take our turn to go into the pit lane dive bombing the right hand side Breaking as late as we can, although that was actually quite a conservative entry. Not changing the tyres, not refuelling. Therefore, all the guys here stood about doing nothing. Still presumably getting paid to do their job, which is to stand around. Uh, so as long as they get paid, then I suppose it's not too much of a loss. So we continue. Now down in 10th, back to 8th. And this was the biggest drama, I would say, on the final lap. This uh, Nissan coming at me quite quickly with half a lap remaining or less than and I was just hoping they would stay behind I started the race I think I think it was 10th or 8th or something if we can finish it here then at least we haven't really lost too many positions uh, coming through here to the penalty line not with a penalty this time miraculously then with just a couple of chicanes left to go the race wasn't quite over as the guy behind went for a bit of a dive bomb into that final apex didn't quite work we're gonna cut the corner and maintain the position for the time being and finish in eighth place a long way off the next race i decided to drive the nissan with a toyota minolta livery on it which is quite cursed you might have noticed there the cars behind uh, getting a very slow start such is the awkward starting position on this circuit where anyone from 10th backwards kind of has to start on the chicane it's always been an issue of Gran Turismo online 
whereby starting on an awkward corner. Anyway, we find ourselves now in ninth, up behind Sim Speed Vision, who, get, who gets a bit of a poor run here. Now, the Nissan has a very good top end. It isn't the best car for this race. The Mazda 787B, which we are pushing along here at near enough 230 miles per hour. That is the go-to car for this race, and it really highlights, I think, the imbalance of Group 1 in Gran Turismo 7. I mean, Group C are off on their own. I mean, look at the acceleration from the 787B on the radar. Makes it three abreast temporarily as uh, we're back to where we were before the chicane, although a couple of positions gained. I'm now in seventh. But yeah, the 787B, clearly the quickest car within Group C, and the Group C way quicker on a track like this. The Group 1 is it's just one of those classes that needs a lot of work. You've got all the modern LMP1 cars. You've got the VGT cars and then you've got the group c's it's just kind of all over the place with zero balance and zero balance of performance anyway on the exit of uh Mulsanne, you see there a rather desperate moment i'm turning fully to the left when i should be going straight uh, we are on a straight and typically you don't really need to steer that much but a big mistake there being made and uh, such is the lack of grip especially as the race goes on i wasn't the only one though is this portuguese driver having a rendezvous there with the barrier as now we go into the pit lane our pit crew can do nothing once again i, I suppose the lollipop man actually had a job to do there though so he's uh, actually not completely pointless anyway we resume the race in uh, quite a good battle here with a couple of other guys i'm gonna try and fight for supremacy as a sim speed vision gets run wide and only gets a nice vision of the wall as uh, we run out here was that a bit wide it looks like that's possibly another penalty to add to the collection and it is look at that incredible scenes here as uh you can say that i'm consistent at least there's definitely consistency into mulsan once again and boom even worse this time. And you see, look at that. This uh, this lady here, not impressed at all by my lack of skill on display today. We can only hope that the real-life drivers are better than this this weekend. Look at that rear left tyre. I mean, both rear tyres are completely dying of death. And that does half explain my lack of traction. But now I'm going to take a look at my qualifying lap. For those who want a little bit of guidance... I mean, there are quicker people on YouTube than me. But we can uh, go for a couple of pointers here just to get, maybe tidy up your lap times. So coming through this right-hander, you're breaking pretty much at the end of that first corner. Should see you into this one quite nicely. Up into third gear. We're driving the 787B, by the way. Actually, no, we're not driving the Sauber Mercedes C9. And it really is all about exit speed in this car. If you can get on the power early without spitting out, then you're going to be going quite quickly into Tour Rouge and of course this one is all about avoiding penalties staying on the curb at least two wheels on the curb and you're okay into the first chicane looking for that 200 ball breaking just after it there's a break in the barrier on the left and that should see you into this one quite nicely coming out there in second although third is possible I think coming up towards the second chicane I think this one's a bit harder spotting that breaking board on the right hand side all over the curb up into third gear for better traction on the exit and i say that as i completely or almost spin out i took a bit too much curve on the left hand side there on the exit so don't take as much as i did there breaking at the beginning of the curve on the right hand side i should see you into the apex quite nicely there and it's a, just a case of straightening up the car getting on the power as early as you can and driving off the corner and then we've got the rather difficult couple of corners here at arnage and indianapolis or the other way around it's about riding the curb nicely, getting the camber, carrying the speed through, releasing the brake to carry the speed, maximizing the track width on the exit. Coming up towards the Porsche curves, and this car is quite understeer. You do have to turn in perhaps a bit earlier than you think off the brake to get the car to rotate and just commit. Sometimes you've got to be on the power just to really get the car settled. 
but just turn and commit early to the turn this one i turned in a little bit late you can definitely take a lot of that curb on the left hand side on the apex much more than i did but there's definitely time in this lap as i do surrender about four tenths on this final sector Coming into this final couple of corners you can see they're taking a lot of curb as long as you've got two wheels on the curb then you're okay Coming up towards the line, as I said, a couple of tenths lost. In fact, four tenths lost on that final section. So that could have been maybe a 3.18. We're going to log on to Scotch Egg. Head over to the Americas in the best racing driver uh, account of all time. You notice the car behind spun out. We started 11th and you want to be in the top 10 for this race. Ideally top 9 as if you're 10th or below, you're kind of awkwardly starting on the corner. And that's not what you want now this was a very interesting race start and i've kind of painted a picture here of this race being extremely chaotic which it is and this race start at least was certainly no different started 11th now 7th although looking for the customary 6th behind gust of wind although not for long as seemingly like a gust of wind i go flying past him into the first chicane I'm just sixth place. That is a very solid return so far. 4.6 seconds off the lead. Not in the slipstream range, unfortunately, at this time. But we're going to do our best to try to catch up. In fact, we had a helping hand here from Gust of Wind behind. Bit of uh, bump drafting, which is always helpful. Into the big braking zone here at the end of the straight. Uh, Danolo there. 787B in his name, in fact. Driving the car off his PSN ID. But uh, we're going to go flying past him with, yet again, some more helping hands here from Dust of Wind. As we're doing a really good job here of catching up. This is really good teamwork between the two of us. As we head into the big break zone here at the end. Look at that almighty gaggle for first place. Four cars separated by less than half a second, which is kind of crazy. And a couple of cars there going very wide. And so we are going to get one of those positions immediately. And then the second one here as he serves the penalty. So up into third, 11th to third on this first lap. I mean, Scott Speed doing it once again. And that's going to turn into a second here with the slipstream as we go flying through past the Sauber C9 Mercedes up into second place. Now trying to hunt down uh, Velasa for the race lead. Let's see if it's possible. Well, knowing me, no, it's not because on the exit here, just driving a little bit too wide past the white lines on the right hand side and the stewards hate that the stewards absolutely hate that so don't do that guys as uh, we've collected another penalty for our penalty gauntlet anyway up to the finish that race was not so eventful past that so it's gonna be a podium third place uh, so we're gonna move to the next one i mean this was an eventful video i think quite a lot going on this is race number four now. Can we go one better? You know, we've finished on the podium. We've had a couple of sort of eighths and tenths and that kind of position. Not good enough. But Lizard Monitor is going to go very wide. Interesting name. Um, in fact, when I was in Thailand last year, I saw a couple of monitor lizards. Very interesting creatures. But that is a complete and utter tangent. That is not what we're trying to talk about here. This is a Le Mans race in Group C cars. We're not really here to... I mean, I'm I'm not really that hopeful that any of you clicked on this video to have a discussion about monitor lizards. I mean, you tell me. Maybe you did. But uh, here, Venom is going to go quite wide and uh, surrender the position. Now, this guy was extremely quick. He, was, uh, he seemed to be racing all day and was certainly one of the faster guys in this lobby. I mean, Flash Dagger in the lead, started on pole, has already bolted. He's six seconds clear. But now I have my hands full of Venom trying to keep him at bay. Which is not easy, especially when you've got yet another 0.5 second penalty um, to to complete the gauntlet. Um, the penalty gauntlet. Now, as we head towards um, Indianapolis, uh, the corner, not the actual town or racetrack in the United States, the clarity... I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably knew that anyway. Um, it's an almighty drag race between the two of us here. Myself and Venom. Into this right-hander. I've got the inside for the right, but not for the left. He's up the inside. Kind of pin him a little bit narrow. 
And he's going to make a bit of an error there. So we're going to keep second for the time being. Uh, with one lap remaining. But, well, we have to serve this penalty. So it's not going to stay for the long. As, um... In typical fashion, serving... I think I've lost count. It must be my millionth penalty. Something like that. Might be my two millionth. Can't, can't quite be sure. Uh, maybe you guys have counted that better than me, but... Finishing the race again in third. Another third. And we resume this one. This was the start we saw right at the beginning of the video. And can I just say this? Look, let's just pause it there. He is facing 90 degrees to the left. And the race still says start. I mean, that has got to be the worst start you've ever seen. That is awful. Uh, quite hilarious. Uh, quite good entertainment and quite good content. So I've got to thank him for that. But it is... Uh, <laughs> He's got to be up there with top one worst race starts of all time. In fact, if you have any other examples of bad race starts, be it in a sim racing video or a real life one, then let me know. But that guy goes straight on at the braking zone. And I've been handed a very sizable opportunity to win the Le Mans 24 hour. Yes, that's right. This is the Le Mans 24 um, at least I wish it was. It definitely isn't. I can, I can only dream. But uh, Venom goes through into second place, as you can see. And I knew he was quick. Even with a three-second margin, it wasn't going to be easy. You see I grimace there at the prospect. And then the reality of being handed yet another 0.5-second penalty. It is my kryptonite. The apex of Turt Rouge. I don't think I've met it once in this entire video. Um, so that's a bit of a problem for me, really, isn't it? But well, we're going to continue into the pit lane. I thought I'd go rogue here and do an actual tyre change. Look at that. It costs you maybe five or six seconds doing that. So it does slow you down, but you do have to... But you do get the benefits of fresh tyres for the remainder of the race. Not that it helped me, because I'm going to come through here in a very lonely third position. Uh, only about 10 seconds off the race lead so not too far um, brackets that's actually about a year um, but anyway coming through for yet another podium at Le Mans if only it was an actual podium at the real Le Mans 24 hour then we'd be happy but, but this was a chaotic race I'll take my podiums and I'll thank you for watching goodbye